So welcome to New Student Orientation. So uh, this is our um, agenda for the evening. We've done the welcome, and we're just going to be a little story about a plant, and then we're going to talk about why communication is so important. Uh, we're going to talk about technology. It's especially your friend while we're remote. Um, we're going to talk about them, like starting the semester, and then it's going to be about resources, resources, and more resources. I am going to encourage you to have, like have something to take notes on just as, as we go through. Um, oh, I want to, speaking of notes, I want to draw your attention. So the first step that you were supposed to do this evening was to download the orientation packet. That orientation packet is going to have information uh, that's also covered here so that um, Later, you can be like, oh, wait, what did she say about that thing? And you can be like, wait, it's in the orientation packet. There are a couple of things I want to draw your attention to in the orientation packet. One is one of the very first things you'll find is something that's called student support and resources quick links. And that is like pretty, you know, offices and departments that are covered in this presentation plus more, just really quick links to their websites. Um, so I encourage you to check that out. Um, there is a student resources, student support services and resources brochure, which gives you little blurbs about different offices and resources on campus. Um, and there, there's more than this, but the other thing I wanna draw your attention to is the academic calendar. Um, the academic calendar is really important because those are all the dates that are vital to GCC, like when do classes start? When can you add and drop classes? When is the last day to withdraw from a class? When do we have holidays? When do we randomly, during the semester, it's not that random, there's a method to the madness, celebrate, observe a Monday schedule on a day that is not Monday. And those are, you need all that sort of information on the academic calendar, so you wanna pay attention to that. You can obviously also find it online. Um, so what I'm gonna say about that orientation packet is that just like you should with your notes that you take in class, you know you should review them within 24 hours after taking them to help fill in any gaps and to refresh your memory. I really want you within the next 24 hours to make sure you look through that orientation packet um, to help refresh your memory of the things that you learned and to have you know access to the things that you wanted to um, you know that you might want to that you might want to have remembered. So now we're going to. You've already been welcomed by Eve, and so we're not gonna spend a lot of time here. If she hadn't been able to join us, I would have told you how welcome she wanted you to be. And now it's story time. All right, so um, last summer, uh, I was in my office. Peggy and I are in the same suite, and she's like, Peggy, I mean, she wasn't like Peggy, because she is Peggy. She's like, Tamitha, you have to come check this out. She's like, I was taking a student to a different office, and I was going up the stairs, and I saw this plant growing out of a crack by the stairs and, it, and it's a tomato. And so I went and I couldn't believe it. And there was this tomato, a tomato seed found that one small patch of dirt and it, and it put down its roots and it's, you know, grew well enough to, as you can see, it had fruit and everything. And I like looked at that and I was just, A, it made me really happy. And B, my feeling was there is a metaphor here for our students. Um, because a lot of our students, uh, you know, get to GCC after making it through a whole bunch of challenges. And for, you know, a bunch of our students, this is like, a, you know, a really big deal for them. Um, and so I just want to remind all of you that like this tomato plant, you are tougher than you know. You have survived five months of a pandemic um, and you are still holding on. I, but the thing is, this tomato thrived because it found its resources. It like got found the dirt, it put its roots down, it spread out. Um, so it's really important to find and connect with your resources. Also, I, you know, nature is effing amazing, and I just love the idea of tomatoes everywhere. So that's the story of the tomato plant. All right, let's talk communication. So. You've already heard folks talking about the importance of your email account. I, none of us can stress this enough. Um, your GCC email is how you, the college officially communicates with you. And so you need to check it daily because to be quite honest, 
you're going to get a lot of email. And especially because we're remote, you're going to get even more. And if you don't check it on a daily basis, it, it's likely to become overwhelming. You want to check it and look at what, what's really important for you. Uh, is, is there stuff in there that's more general that you don't need to worry about? Um, and so you really need to check that on a daily basis. It's how the college will let you know things. It's how your professors are going to communicate with you. It's how your advisors are going to communicate with you. So you really want to make sure you check that. Like if you haven't checked it already, log in after this meeting. Trust me, there are emails waiting for you. Um, just as a reminder, you can get to uh, the email by clicking on the login button. Also, this little red arrow is just there to point out that like this search bar is really helpful if you're like, I, you know, you're like, wait, where do I find something about tutoring? If you just type in tutoring in that search bar, you'll find links that will help you. Once you click on that login button, then this drop down menu will come down. I assume all of you have seen this because I'm guessing this is how you got to Moodle um, and you got to my GCC to register for orientation. But just so you know, they're here. One of the advantages of using that link to get to your student email, at least the first time you log in, is it fills in this part so you don't have to type this all in. Obviously, if you have other Gmail accounts, you can just add this to um, you know, the list of accounts you have. And then once it's in, you wouldn't have to, you know, you would just have access to it via Gmail. But especially if you don't have a Gmail account, I really encourage you to use that link directly from the main GCC page. GCC is on social media. I definitely encourage you to find us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram. Um, you know, our general GCC page is a really good starting point. Um, the library is a good source for information and student activities and community services, how you'll find out about events that are going on. Um, there's also a GCC community group and there's a GCC squad that was started by a bunch of students. So I encourage you to check those out as well. All right, technology. This is gonna be, excuse me, had to pause for some water. This is gonna be especially important this semester while we are remote. So the two things I'm gonna to touch on right now are my GCC and Moodle. Um, so uh, my GCC is your student information system. It's where you can um, register for classes, check your schedule, check your, update your like uh, address and phone number information. It's where if you have a preferred name different than your legal name, you can put your preferred name in here that's under my account. Um, and that's here where it says my account. That's where you can update your personal information there. Um, uh, other things that you will find on my GCC, uh, there are certain forms you can just do online if you click on this button. If we were on the website, you would see things. You can do things like change your advisor or change your major just by submitting an online form there. Um, you, you know, and it has, you can, there's access to other things. Um, you have announcements here, um, including one uh, that has instructions for how to get a, ID from, you know, to, from a distance. Um, here is where there are upcoming events. Uh, so right now, this is today's orientation. Look, we're there, we're doing an event. Over here are the most uh, up to the most current um, happenings on the academic calendar. And you can get to the full academic calendar by clicking a button that's currently hidden. If you click here, so once you get your ID, you'll have a photo here. Um, as when you, as until you have an ID, it just says no photo. Um, if you click on that, it'll bring up your dashboard. So, oh, here, you can see this a little bit better now. So, um, yep, submit a form. You can find various information over here, announcements, events, academic calendar, click on this, get you to your dashboard. Again, if you click on this, that's where you can update information, including your, um, your preferred name. When you click on your dashboard, your dashboard is going to look a little bit different than this. This is a slightly older version of the of the dashboard, but you can do things like see your schedule. Your advisor is listed here. If you just click on that, you can email your advisor. Your schedule is here. You also want to make sure you don't have any holds on your account. 
If you ever forget your student ID number, it's hiding under this blue button. Uh, so just so you know, that, so that's, what, that's the sort of stuff that you can get to from your dashboard. Oh, financial aid information is here. That's also really important to keep keeping track of. So that's a quick introduction to my GCC. Um, Moodle, all right. Moodle is where your courses live. So if you haven't logged into Moodle yet, well, obviously you did because you're here, but if you haven't spent any time on Moodle, I encourage you to check it out. Um, not all of your courses may be live yet. Your instructors may wait until the first day of courses to make them live, but some of your instructors may already have information out there. Um, when you log into Moodle, this is what your dashboard will look like or something like this. Um, you can find your courses here, and you can also find them here under the course and cor custom course menu. Um, and then when you click into a course, it's going to look something like, it's going to look like this. Well, a little bit different than this. Um, so the course content will be here. Um, but also I just want to draw your attention to there are a bunch of resources that are, that you can access here on the right hand side as well. Um, and like your instructor will probably have a bunch of kind of like introductory course information right here. And then different instructors set up the like sections and topics of their Moodle courses differently. Some do it weekly, some do it thematically. Um, and so one of the things you want to do is kind of get used to what those look like. Um, you know, how your different instructors have their, uh, their Moodle sites um, set up. One of the things I would encourage you to think about if you're like, if, all, if this is like, feels challenging or um, you're confused, like maybe because your instructors have things set up differently, setting up an appointment with a peer tutor is a really great thing to do because they, you don't, it doesn't have to be course specific. You could say, I really need, some, I really want to, you know, have to go over my Moodle courses and have, um, the peer tutor kind of help me figure out how they work. Or um, I'm confused by one of my syllabi, syllabi for one of my classes and I just want to go over it with a peer tutor so I know what the expectations are for my class. Um, I want to draw your attention to this GCC links um, link that's at the top. Uh, if you click on that, there are some very important um, options that you'll find there. The two I want to draw your attention to is this Moodle Users Classroom and the Remote and Online Learning for Students. Um, so uh, the Moodle Users Classroom looks like this. And it has, inf so right now everything's collapsed in the screen grab that I have right here. Um, but it has information about navigating and customizing Moodle. If you haven't ever had to create a PDF, it walks you through that. It can show you um, the text editor that is used in Moodle um, and has uh, information about creating and managing YouTube videos if you need that. And it also has information about assignments, quizzes, and grades for students. Um, the thing that, so uh, under GCC, the second thing that was under GCC links is this remote and online learning for students. All right, if there's very few things that you take away from this orientation, one of the things that I want you to take away is that before classes start on September 2nd, you need to come to this remote and online learning for students link and go through the course. Um, because it has a lot of helpful information that will make sure that you are prepared for that first day of classes. You don't wanna show up to the first day of class and be confused about like, wait, I don't understand what a discussion section is or um, how, you know, you know, is, you know, how am I being graded? Or like, how do I access this on Moodle? This, and the other thing that's beautiful about this is it's not just Moodle based, it's about online learning in general. So um, the topics, so there's, uh, you know, welcome, it talks about, there's introductory information. So there's a section that talks about just what is distance learning, skills for online learning, um, Video conferencing, so, you know, Moodle and Google Meet are going to be used probably in at least some of your classes. And there's a lot of helpful information here about using Moodle, including 
a very a, like a tutorial video by our own Gary Ackerman, Dr. Gary Ackerman, who is here with us this evening, which you like some of us like need to see, you know, need to see it to understand it. And so he walks you through all of that. If you have a Chromebook, this gives you some helpful information about how Chromebooks and Moodle um, interact. So I'm just going to repeat that again before the first day of classes, make sure you go through this remote and online learning course um, because it really is um, set up to help you be, you know, the most prepared to be successful for the start of the semester. Um, and also I'm gonna repeat, like remember, peer tutors are available to help you navigate these sort of things. So don't, you know, that's a great use for peer tutoring. So as the semester begins, now I'm going to talk about, now I'm going to shift gears and talk about offices and departments. So admissions and registrar is where we're going to start. So um, all of you have had some sort of interaction with the admissions office because you applied to come here. Um, there is still information that you're going to need to submit to the admissions office. If you need Corey information for a program that you're in, or if you haven't submitted all your transcripts from uh, any high schools or um, colleges that you've already attended, those need to go to the admissions office because um, you want to make sure all your information is up to date. The registrar is the office that maintains student records. Um, so if you need an official transcript, you get that through the registrar. There is, um, there's a link on the registrar's webpage for requesting an official transcript. Um, if you need an unofficial transcript, you can actually get that just from your MyGCC, just FYI. Um, but you will need official transcripts, for example, if you are applying to transfer um, and there are other folks who require official transcripts. Um, for some of my jobs recently, I've needed to supply transcripts to verify that I have the degrees that I say that I have. Um, you might need to verify that you are a student at GCC, maybe for some benefits that you're receiving or for, um, you know, for your job or something like that. And so the registrar's office also does enrollment verifications. You can, um, again, you can find information about that on their website. Honestly, if you use that search bar on the main GCC page and just type in enrollment verifications, it'll bring you to links for that. The registrar's office, is in charge of changing majors and changing advisors, but you can do that, as I mentioned, via my GCC um, under the submit a form link on the left-hand side. So that's an online process, um, which is uh, nice and relatively simple. So that's admissions and registrars. All right, health records. The main thing I want you to take away from this is all, if you're enrolled in fully online classes, which most of you are, you don't need to worry about the immunization requirements for this semester, okay? If you are in a program where you will be, uh, where there's some sort of in-person component and you already know what that is and it's mostly the nursing and paramedic and medical assistant stuff, I mean, programs, um, there may be a, uh, one or two other programs I'm not thinking of off the top of my head. Uh, if it's in person, then you are gonna need to submit those. It applies to students who are taking 12 or more credits and are under 30. Um, uh, if you're an international student, you, it would apply to you regardless of how many credits you're taking. In addition, if you're doing one of those health profession uh, programs, you have additional health records that you need to submit and you should know all about that already. If you have questions about that, you really wanna contact your advisor or your program about that. But again, for the vast majority of you, you don't need to worry about health records while we're remote. When we come back in person, then they'll become an issue again. Um, and you'll wanna pay attention to that at that point. All right, financial aid. Um, this is where a lot of people tune in because financial aid is how you get help for paying for college. Um, if you have any questions, please contact the folks in the financial aid office. They are professionals. They've been doing this for years. They're really helpful. Um, and uh, they have the answers to your questions. Um, so a couple of important things that I wanna to touch on with financial aid. The first is that it's important to know that you have to reapply 
every academic year. Financial aid is not a one and done kind of situation. And if you think about it, it makes sense because your financial situation could change from year to year. And there's no way that the federal government is going to know that, which is why you have to um, reapply every year. You do that by submitting your FAFSA, which is uh, a free application for financial aid. Um, you can, this October 1st, you can go ahead and submit your FAFSA for next year. There is a priority deadline of May 1st, so if you can um, get your application in by May 1st, that's great, but if you can't, still apply. Um, it is not like, it's not like you won't get financial aid if you apply after the 1st, just to be clear. Um, aid comes in different forms. There's grants, which is money that you don't need to repay. There, there are loans, which you absolutely do need to repay. Um, and you definitely want to talk to financial aid about like what that means. And then there's work study. So work study is work that you do. Well, technically we'd be on campus, but it'll be remotely through offices on campus. Um, and for those you apply, for, you can get information about work study positions that are open from the financial aid office. You apply like you would for any other job. Obviously it'll be an online process. Usually there's some sort of interview. Um, and so, and then you have, you know, you, you know, hours that you work and or specific tasks that you're given and you get a paycheck like you would any other, um, uh, you know, job that you might have. The work study, again, comes through the college and is for college work. It is not like, oh, I work at Costco and that's where my work study is going. That's not the same thing. So that's some financial aid basics, more basics. All right. So to be eligible for financial aid, you have to have your high school diploma or equivalency. You have to be a U.S. citizen or green card holder. And then you have to um, be pursue, have a declared major or be pursuing a specific, sorry, I totally got stopped there, a specific certificate. Um, so if you're just taking like a class or two, then financial aid, that, and you're not pursuing them, that's going towards a major or certificate, then financial aid isn't an option. If you are currently in high school, financial aid is not available to you. Again, those are federal rules, not GCC rules. Um, the courses that you take need to count towards the program that you're working uh, toward. Uh, you know, there, if you have questions about that, again, go to financial aid. Speaking about talking to financial aid, you, if you need to make a change to your schedule, there are two people you're going to consult. One is your advisor. You don't want to be making changes willy-nilly because you just don't know. You don't have the same information that your advisor does. And you want to, if you are a recipient of financial aid, you want to make sure you check with the financial aid staff just to make sure that you know how that change may or may not affect your financial aid. All right? Uh, you don't want to have the federal government ask for money back when you weren't expecting that. So if you need to make a change to your schedule, especially if it involves withdrawing from a class, you want to make sure you talk to an advisor and financial aid. But again, changes to schedule, just be safe. Advisor, financial aid, nothing willy-nilly. Um, all right, financial aid, the federal government doesn't just give you money and walk away. Uh, they actually keep tabs. So you actually need to attend your classes. Um, oh, here's a fun fact. Uh, that you might not know, uh, your, instru your instructors can tell when you uh, last accessed Moodle. So if, there's, uh, if there are um, attendance requirements for a class that's just on Moodle, that's just an online class, and you think, well, how's the instructor going to know? That's how the instructor's going to know. Also, for, you know, for classes that are purely online, your instructors will probably keep track of, like, did you participate in discussion sections when you were supposed to? Um, if you don't attend your classes, um, then the federal government will ask for their money back. Um, so if there's a reason why you can't attend your classes, then you want to contact an advisor right away to try to figure out, like, does it, you know, probably makes the most sense to let go of that course. And again, you want to talk to financial aid. So don't just stop attending, reach out to people. Um, and that really is, um, you know, going back to the tomato plant and finding your resources, 
you know, you really want to, you really want to make sure you are asking for help when you need it. Um, you also need to be making satisfactory progress towards your degree. Your degree. Um, you need to have uh, maintain a minimum GPA of a 2.0, and you need to complete two thirds of the classes that you're registered for. So if you're taking three classes, that are three credits each, and you complete two of them, so you pass them, um, then that puts you on track for meeting the satisfactory academic progress requirements for financial aid. Also, just FYI, you need a minimum of a 2.0 to graduate, so that should be your very basic goal anyway. I'm sure all of you are aiming for much higher GPAs. Again, if you have questions about any of this, contact the folks in financial aid. So if you have any questions about financial aid in general, if you're not sure whether you're eligible, if you um, have questions about applying, if you need help filling out the FAFSA, the financial aid can help you with all of that. Um, so uh, you can you would want you just want to contact them, and again, uh, you can find them by searching for financial aid on our website or use the quick links uh, thing that's in your um, orientation packet. Um, so that's all I have to say about financial aid. So financial aid is where you get help paying for college. The bursar's office is in charge of bills. Um, and as you can see, their website is right here. Um, so your bills were due August 6th. Um, if you make any changes to your registration after those dates, then that generates a new bill that's due immediately. For the fall and spring semesters, you can actually set up a payment plan over four months. Um, you will get uh, notifications about when bills are um, available. Uh, those will be emailed to you. And then, um, you can, through MyGCC, you can actually pay uh, with a credit or a debit card or an electronic check. Uh, I don't, I realize I don't know the, the, what to do about the personal check or cash options since we are remote, but if you contact the billing, for the bursar's office, they'll be able to answer that question for you. The other thing that the bursar's office does is process the student health insurance. So this is really important. If you are enrolled in nine or more credits and against uh, this is a, a state rule, not a GCC rule. Um, you are automatically enrolled in the college health insurance plan. Um, however, if you already have health insurance, you may be eligible to waive the school pro policy. Um, but there's a, there's a process for that. It's online. You have to create an account. It's separate from your GCC account. This is a special account that you create with the state. And then you certify that you have uh, that you currently have comparable coverage. Where do you find this? If you go to the Bursar's Office website over here, so Bursar's Office is uh, gcc.mass.edu/billing, and then you want the Health Insurance tab and the Insurance Waiver um, link that drops down from that. This is what's important. If you're going to waive your health insurance. You have to do that before the first day of classes each year. So first day of classes is September 2nd. So, the first, so you need to make sure you take care of this well before September 1st, okay? FERPA. So FERPA stands for the Family Education Rights and Privacy Act. This is a federal law. It applies to all college students across the nation, regardless of how old you are. What this law says is that your, act, your records belong to you, and we are not to talk, we, the folks at GCC, are not to talk to other people about, about you. Um, this is why your GCC email is so important because it's the only way we know that it's you who's communicating with us. If you use a non-GCC email account, you might not, and you reach out to someone on campus, you might not hear back from them. Or what they may do is just respond to your GCC email account. So again, you need to make sure you're checking that and using that. Um, so, however, many folks have get assistance with paying for their bills and they want that person or persons who are helping them to um, be able to have access to the bills so that they can pay them. And so there is a waiver that you have to complete. Um, and once you do that, again, that, there, that waiver is specifically just for bills it's not for like academic information or anything like that. Um, so if you want someone to have access to your billing information so they can help pay the bills, make sure you do the FERPA waiver through the bursar's office. 
All right. Just checking on time. Um, oh, good. All right. So we're going to go over a little bit on our um, before our first break, but that's okay. I want to talk about advising. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to talk about advising. I'm going to have Tanya Blunden, our Director of Advising Career and Transfer, talk to you about advising because I'm guessing you all could use a break from listening to just me. Hi, I'm Tanya Blunden, Director of Advising. On behalf of the Academic Advising Center team, let me welcome you to GCC. We're here to help you make the most of your time with us, whether it's one semester or a couple of academic years. In the Academic Advising Center, you'll find staff advisors who specialize in liberal arts and health sciences advising, but who can help any student get started on their academic journey. We're here to direct you to where you can find the answers to your questions. You'll also find the transfer coordinator. GCC students transfer to many different four-year institutions. Through our mass transfer program, you can go to state schools like UMass Amherst or Westfield State, but students also transfer to private four-year colleges like Mount Holyoke, Smith, Emerson, and Amherst College. The earlier you start this process, the more options you'll have. So consider, even if you're not sure, talking to the transfer coordinator early in your time at GCC. In the Academic Advising Center, you'll also find peer mentors. Peer mentors are students who have been through it. They've figured out how to survive and thrive at GCC, and they want to give you advice on how you can do the same. And lastly, you'll find our Career Services Studio. In the Career Services Studio are the Internship Coordinator and the Career Services Coordinator, who both can help you make the connection between your academics and your goals for after graduation. Every student at GCC is assigned an academic advisor. Some of you will be assigned to a staff advisor in the advising center, and others will be assigned to a faculty person in their area of study. You can find your assigned advisor in your MyGCC account. You can also change your assigned advisor. Maybe your original advisor isn't a good fit, or maybe over the course of your studies, you make a connection with a professor that you'd like to work more closely with. The process for a reassignment is quick and easy. You can find a form in your MyGCC. Now that you know who we are, you might be wondering, what do advisors do and why should I talk to mine? These are great questions. Most of you spoke to an advisor to register for your first semester classes. Helping you make your schedule is one thing an advisor does, but there's so much more. You can think of your advisor as the tour guide to your time at GCC. We're here to help you figure out where you want to go and make sure you don't miss any of the sites along the way. In addition to registering for classes, your advisor can help you think about your skills and interests and make connections to those in your academic plan. Create an academic plan that goes beyond just the semester. Help you have a sense of how long is it going to take you to finish this certificate or this degree program. What options do you have? Make connections between your major and potential careers of interest. Explore transfer opportunities. Talk through tricky situations like not doing well in a class or thinking about changing your major. And connect you with resources at GCC and in the local community. There are lots of opportunities to take advantage of a GCC. It's never too early, but it can be too late. Here are some upcoming important dates to keep in mind that also happen to be good checkpoints to think about connecting with your advisor. September 9th is the last day that you can add regular start classes or drop a regular start class you're already in and still receive a full refund. You might notice that I mentioned regular start classes. This is because GCC offers classes that run for the full semester, as well as courses oh, no! that start late or end early. Regular start means it begins on the first day and it ends on the last day. Anything in between is something that we call a non-standard class. If this appeals at all confusing or if you have any questions, this isn't a perfect example of something that you want to talk to your advisor about. So back to the important date. September 9th is the last day to add or to drop with a full refund our regular start classes. September 16th is the last day to drop regular start classes with a 75% refund. It's a good idea to check in with your advisor before you're making schedule changes and also to check in with financial aid as well. October 27th 
is the day that current students can begin registering for the spring semester. If you haven't met your academic advisor by this point in the term, this is a perfect opportunity to make an introductory appointment, get to know each other, and start planning your future. I invite you to start the conversation today. Your advisor is ready for you. Yay, that was awesome. Sorry, I'm just super excited about our videos. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of touch on some of the things that Tanya just mentioned, because I think it bears repeating and sometimes it's helpful to hear it again and see it written out. So just a reminder, every student gets an academic advisor, no matter how many credits you're in. Um, there are staff advisors in the advising center, and there are also faculty advisors who work with specific programs. You can find your assigned advisor in your MyGCC account. I showed that to you earlier. And just remember, advising is about more than just registering for your classes. Classes They can help with major and career exploration, academic planning, figuring out how transfer works, and getting connected to resources and supports. They're, you know, like so many other folks there at GCC, they're really there to help you. Um, and they are really good about getting you to the people that you need to be in touch with. Um, the Academic Advising Center houses a lot of things in one place, so advisors, the transfer coordinator, the internship coordinator, career services, and peer mentors. Um, and we have at least one orientation leader uh, here this evening who was a peer mentor, and can talk a little bit about that. Um, and just remember, it is never too early to um, you know, connect with an advisor and start planning your next steps, especially if you have if you think there's any chance you might be transferring, you definitely want to connect with um, an advisor and um, ideally the transfer coordinator sooner rather than later so that as you are taking moving forward, you are taking all the courses that make the most sense to get you where you need to go. Um, here are the important dates that she was talking about. Um, and again, these are on the academic calendar. So I'm just gonna, you know, uh, again, encourage you to look at that. And remember, if you have any questions, if you aren't sure about a class, if you're not sure the class is gonna work for you, you want to, that's, a, that's a perfect time to talk to an advisor to kind of figure out, do you need to let class go or do you just need some additional support? And then um, uh, this is where I'm gonna take a break. Uh, while Career Services is housed in the advising um, center, um, I did promise that we would take breaks about every, um, 45 minutes, and so uh, right now it's 7.30. I'm gonna get our 7.32 on my screen, on my computer, eight minutes, and we're gonna come back at 7.40, uh, and we're gonna get things started. So take a moment to like stretch your legs, get some water, whatever you need. Don't wander too far away. We get, there's a lot more coming, um, and, uh, and we're looking forward to keeping on with the uh, orientation in eight short minutes. Okay, see you back here in eight, oh, now seven minutes. You got seven minutes, my friends. All right, folks, it's 7.40 on my computer clock. Um, well, and 7.40 on my phone clock. So that means <clears throat> it's time to get started again. <coughs> Sorry about that. All right, uh, I need to get back to presentation mode. All right, so Career Services is housed in the Advising Center, um, and it's focused on empowering GC students to become career ready through a variety of steps, including um, informed career and education decision making, preparation for the internship and job application process, making work informed edu education and activities, um, and then access to a world of work connections and employment opportunities. I'm really thinking about what are your career goals and how do you get there from here? And to talk more to you, <coughs> excuse me, about career services, um, is gonna, I'm gonna have, is gonna, man, that break was a big mistake. I can't talk straight. Uh, is Shannon Duran, who's the career services coordinator. Wait, where did she go? Wait, I'm coming back, don't worry. There we go. Hello, my name is Shannon Doran. I'm the Career Services Coordinator at Greenfield Community College. It is my honor and delight to both invite and encourage you to take full advantage of career services during your time at GCC. Career services, we focus on supporting students in a few key areas. 
Ideally, that would begin with goal setting and action planning. Research shows that when we write down our goals, especially if those are combined with action steps and some time frames, our ability to achieve our goals greatly increases. The second phase of support that benefits most students is career exploration and decision making. And I have to say, even students that I've worked with who thought they knew exactly where they're going often benefited from taking a couple of career assessments, engaging in some additional self-reflection, getting some additional feedback from people that know them well, and also getting some experience in those areas that they're interested in. We tend to call these work-based learning experiences, although so those are things like mentorship, internships, maybe community service, college service, and sometimes even employment. Um, there's a way that that combination of kind of research and exploration can um, empower us to make much more informed and strategic decisions. I know that all of us here are deeply invested in you getting everything you can out of GCC. And if you have more clarity about where you want to go after GCC, you can backwards design and make choices about your education that will be more strategic and effective. An additional area that we hope to support you in developing is your readiness to apply and, and obtain employment. We want to help you um, learn effective strategies and also get those different documents, including an e-portfolio together that many employers will want to see in order to grant you an interview and move forward in the hiring process. We want you to get work. We want you to thrive. We want all of your knowledge and skills um, to be able to have the greatest impact they can. And when it comes to career services, there's a tremendous amount of resources on our career services website, which I hope you will utilize. Uh, additionally, there's a chat feature on the website. Um, please feel free to use it if you have any questions or immediate needs. I can also be reached by email at careerservices at gcc.mass.edu. Um, and there will be many, many different workshops and events happening all semester. So again, if you make a plan, you set some goals, um, I encourage you to kind of look at that schedule and engage, take advantage of the um, opportunities that will really inform and help you move forward on achieving those goals. So thank you again. My name is Shannon Doran, Career Services, and I look forward to working with you. So, uh, so I definitely encourage you to connect with uh, Shannon. Also, there are um, a lot of career services uh, workshops and that's, that are happening right now, and you can find information about that on the main GCC page, but also in that announcement section of your My GCC homepage. So, this is now we're going to talk about other, like some of the stuff we talked about are resources, but these are a lot of like supports that are available to you. So this is the part of orientation where I really stress that um, we have a very weird perspective on asking for help in our society for reasons that make no sense to me. It is sometimes viewed as um, a sign of weakness when in reality, nothing could be further from the truth. Asking for help is a sign of strength. It's recognizing that like, hey, I can't do this by myself, or I'm having a problem with this one thing, or I've got all this stuff going on in my life, and I just need, like, I need a helping hand. And I will tell you that many of our students at GCC, the ones who are most successful, are the ones who have asked for help. They are like that tomato plant. They found their resources. They put out their roots. They made connections, and then they bore fruit. And so I really am going, like one of the things that makes GCC so special are the people. And so you wanna, you wanna take advantage of, of that amazing resource that GCC has. We have a bunch of different resources. We're gonna talk about um, academic ones, personal support ones, and then a whole host of other student resources. Um, so academic support resources, we have a really wonderful library and library staff. Um, uh, when we are on campus, the library is one of the most beautiful places on campus. It's on the third floor. It has these gorgeous windows. It has study hub rooms. Um, it's a great, and there's like different levels of noise depending on where you are in the library. Um, but even when we're not in session, the library, librarians provide so much help and support. 
you can get a library card virtually. If you go to their website, you can just click on that link to get a library card. Um, and when the library is, is open virtually and their hours will be on their website, they're still working that out for the fall. Um, you can chat with a librarian and they are, they know so much, like it's not just about like getting help with research or getting like um, that sort of thing, but A, they know a lot about GCC and can really help get you connected with where you need to go. But also if you're having some tech issues, they can also be really helpful for that. I know that they were doing a lot of tech assistance when we made our transition last March. So I can't say enough wonderful things about our librarian staff. They're really, they're really fabulous and I admire them. Um, the library is, has a tech equipment lending library is part of the library. So if you don't have easy internet access, you can, uh, you can check out a hotspot, you can check out laptops, um, the library, and there's other equipment that you can borrow. Um, they provide the sort of thing you would expect, like one-on-one -on -one help with research projects. As I mentioned, they have tech support. You'll want to check the library website for their hours. When we're back on campus, there are textbooks are in the library. So in case you forgot yours one day or you just need to do some reading, um, you can borrow it while you're staying in the library. They have free printing and they have, as I mentioned, some really beautiful study spaces. Um, what, again, I really encourage you to connect with the library, check out their website, use that chat function. Um, but I will stop talking about the library and I will let um, Lorena talk to you about the library. She's one of the fabulous folks in the library. And remember, you want to get a library card um, and you can do that virtually through their website. Hi, I'm Lorena, a librarian at the GCC Library. And we'd like to welcome you to GCC. At the library, our whole job is to make sure that you have what you need in order to succeed and do your best academic work. We support students in two different ways. One is by providing material such as books and technology that you may need. Our tech lending library is a resource for students to access equipment such as laptops and Wi-Fi hotspots. And two, by providing support in order for you to have the necessary research and technology skills to succeed. It's our job to help you answer any questions that may arise during your academic career here at GCC. No question is too big or too small, and we are not going to evaluate you, and we are not judgmental. You can ask us anything, and if we don't have the answer, we'll point you in the right direction. Librarians are available to assist you virtually during library hours or by appointment. We can answer any questions you have on services, regular research concerns, or technology issues. Students generally find us in person, but don't worry. Librarian support is available remotely, and you can contact us via our chat, video chat, phone call, text, or email. We can also schedule one-on-one -on -one appointments with students via Zoom, Google Meet, and Jitsi. We encourage students to get a library card as soon as the semester begins. Your library card not only allows you to access materials and to check them out, but also to access our online library databases. In order to sign up for a library card, please visit the library's website and click on Get a Library Card on the green banner located under the white catalog search box. It only takes a minute to fill out that form, so you might as well request a library card after this video. If you have any questions, please contact us and we will be happy to help. We look forward to working with you. Please check out our library social media pages and follow us. Thank you.
Um, so yes, <clears throat> the library, excellent resources. Um, librarians are all about helping you find answers to questions and it doesn't have to be school related. Just remember libraries and librarians are awesome places and people. All right, peer tutoring. So um, I, uh, we have a great video from one of the peer tutors uh, that we're gonna watch. I just wanna stress that um, Peer tutoring is free to any GCC student who wants to improve their academic performance. It's not just about, you know, if you feel like you're struggling in a class, maybe you just aren't doing as well as you want to do, or maybe you feel like you want to, you're not taking in the information, you know, as fully as you'd like. Um, they support uh, math, writing, and most course content. They can help with study strategies, note-taking, time management. Um, and like I said, you know, they're helpful. They can help you figure out your syllabi from your instructors. They can help, you know, with your Moodle courses. Um, and, um, you, and they have virtual appointments via Google Meet. And since all students have, a, you know, a Gmail account through GCC, you have access to Google Meet. But enough from me. Let's hear from peer two. Hi there, my name's Hannah White and I'm one of the writing tutors in GCC's peer tutoring program. This video is going to be a short introduction to what peer tutoring is, how to access it in this new virtual environment that we're living in, and how you might want to use peer tutoring for help in your courses at GCC. Peer tutoring is a free service for all GCC students. Between all of the tutors, we tutor content in pretty much every course offered at GCC, including math, languages, science, and writing in any subject. One-on-one -on -one tutoring appointments typically last for about 50 minutes, and they are available at a mutually agreed upon time. We are currently tutoring virtually via Google Meet, which is a video conferencing platform that is automatically installed in all of your GCC student email accounts, which means you don't have to worry about installing anything new on your computer. We also have a tip sheet available on how to use Google Meet on our website. In order to schedule a peer tutoring appointment, you can go to our website, which is gcc.mass.edu slash tutoring. You'll also find a link to peer tutoring embedded in your Moodle page, listed under student support. Once you are on our website, you should see a big orange rectangular button that says request an appointment on it. If you click on this button, it will take you to a separate form, which you should fill out in full, and then hit submit. After you submitted your request for a tutoring appointment, you should remember to check your GCC student email account on a regular basis because a staff member will be contacting you as soon as possible to confirm your appointment. You can also call our reception number, which is 413-775-1330. And if no one answers, you can leave a message and a staff member will get back to you as soon as possible. A lot of things could happen in your tutoring session depending on what you're working on and what you want help with. In terms of writing appointments, tutors can help you at any stage of the writing process, from brainstorming paper ideas to reviewing and revising your drafts. A math tutoring session might include things like helping you work through a problem or test corrections. A tutoring session for a language course might include activities like practicing speaking world languages with your tutor, such as French, Spanish, or sign language. Tutors can also help you with general study skills. For example, we can share strategies for scheduling your time, note-taking, reading, and studying for your exams. I also just want to highlight that you don't have to be struggling, of course, to benefit from peer tutoring. Even we tutors get tutored by our fellow tutors because it's just really helpful for us. Thanks for listening, and I hope I get to see you soon. Um, so yes, yeah, so those are the, so again, it's free to any student. They have um, tutors for pretty much every class that GCC offers. Um, again, it's not just, it can be not just coursework. And, you know, then they have nice virtual appointments via Google Meet. And um, I believe we have at least one orientation leader uh, working this evening who is a peer tutor. Um, 
and I'm guessing she's already been talking about it, but it really is a really fabulous resource. All right, the math studio. So when we're on campus, um, all the uh, academic areas have their own studios, but the math studio actually has, provides um, support uh, to students through their math studio, which you can use in addition to, um, or instead of peer tutoring. Um, and they have a virtual math studio that is in effect, um, even while we're remote. And so it really strives to be a community of math learners where students are encouraged to drop in and work with other students. And then during specific times, a member of the GCC mathematics faculty is available to provide assistance on a drop-in basis in the virtual math studio. Um, so if you need help with homework uh, or that sort of thing, you know, this is, or you're like confused by how a pro, you know, how a specific problem is working, like the math studio is a great place just to drop in. Um, so you don't need to make an appointment the way you would with peer tutoring. Um, and so, I, you know, math is like one of the things that a lot of students, um, you know, feel challenged by. Um, and it's just really great to like get the help you need to be able to do it. Um, and uh, you can find the schedule for them on the math department's website for the studio. Um, and again, there's a link for that in the quick links sheet in your packet. So personal support resources. Uh, we have a really fabulous wellness center with um, really wonderful staff. Um, we have uh, wellness, the wellness center houses both counseling services and um, disability services and other support services related to that. And I am going to um, turn it over to uh, those folks to talk about uh, the work that they do. Um, so the first video is going to be um, Colleen Caffrey, the coordinator of disability services, Cindy Kunz, who is the learning specialist, and Carol Levy, who is the administrative assistant for the Wellness Center. Hi, my name is Colleen Caffrey. And I'm Cindy Kunz, but you can call me Sin. And I'm Carol Leary. We, along with Kathleen Keough, our learning support counselor, are the Wellness Center at GCC. I have the privilege of working with students with disabilities to remove the barriers that prevent them from accessing the programs and services at GCC. The students I work with have a variety of challenges from physical ones to invisible ones like mental health challenges and learning disabilities. I also work with students with temporary conditions like concussions. So the way it works, you make an appointment by calling Carol. When we're on campus, we meet in my office. Off campus, we meet over Zoom. We talk about your experiences and challenges, look over your documentation, and if you're eligible for accommodations, we create an accommodation agreement, which you can then give to your instructors at the beginning of each semester. Over to you, Sim. Thanks. I'm the learning specialist, and students are referred to me, usually by Colleen, for help in developing academic strategies that are based on their accommodations. And we'll look at the strengths of your particular learning style and then boost up the areas where you might need some support. I oversee assistive technology and trainings for things like smart pens and dictation or reading software. We can work together on time management and organization systems that actually work for you so you don't get overwhelmed and you can stay on track. Some students meet with me every week all semester and others meet with me just a few times and are pretty good to go. The best way to contact me for a Zoom appointment is through email. Take it away, Carol. <laughs> well, as the Wellness Center's Learning um, Administrative Assistant, I not only provide the administrative support for our staff, I also provide reception for our students. Whether you're looking for information about the services we provide, maybe where and how do you send us your documentation, or you'd like to set up a, a, a schedule a meeting with one of our staff, all you have to do is call me. I'm easy to find. My contact information's on the GCC website under both disability services and counseling services right on the homepage. I'm also the advisor for the Neurodiversity Club. I'm sure you will be receiving information about clubs once the semester gets started, but if you're interested in learning more about the Neurodiversity Club before then, feel free to contact me. 
and I'm the host of the Hot Mess Express, a support group that's open to all students who want to learn a little bit about the brain and how to conquer habits like procrastination that can totally derail your semester. So keep an eye on your student email for more information, and I hope to see you here on Zoom. So please do get in touch if we can help in any way. If we're not who you need, we can connect you with the right person. We'd much rather be talking to you than sitting in our offices all by ourselves. <laughs> See you soon. Bye. Bye. Um, I'm sitting here smiling because I just love the videos that everyone's done, and I love how different they are and how each person put their own stamp on it. Um, there are a couple of things that I want to stress about uh, the disability services side of things. The first is um, if you uh, worked with special ed or something like that in high school and it was not your favorite thing, I just really want to stress that the way it works in college is very, very different. And so I, um, if, for example, if you had an IEP or a 504 in high school, I'm going to really encourage you even if you're hesitant or resistant, or you just kind of want to see if you can do it on your own, to go ahead and connect with Colleen. Um, she's incredibly helpful. Uh, she's going to have a conversation with you. And what you really want is you want to have those accommodations in place, and then you can decide whether or not you want to share them with your instructors and use them. I will say um, the advantage of taking, um, taking that, you know, taking that on and getting your accommodations if you, if you should have them, is that then you get to focus on your classes in a way that show, you know, your abilities, not like be challenged unnecessarily. Um, I've been in higher ed a long time, um, and I've seen when things have not gone well for folks who um, didn't connect with disability services, not just here, but at other institutions, and I really just encourage you to follow through on that if that's something that applies to you. And then I do also want to stress, Cindy talked about the Hot Mess Express. That's available to any student. Um, I think a lot of us um, find that procrastination can be an issue. And I think just, you know, you know, the purpose of that group is it's going to provide support and strategies. And so, like, I really keep your eye out for that. Look for information on the Wellness Center about that. Um, you know, you want to, like, make as many connections as you can and be as academically strong as you can. And so that's a really great resource that's available to anyone. Now we're gonna hear from Kathleen Keough and some other folks who helped with her video. Um, and we're gonna, one, there might be a familiar face Hello, my name is Kathleen Keough, and I'm the counselor in the Wellness Center Counseling Office. Welcome to GCC. One of my favorite things about my job is working with students like you. College can be exciting and challenging, especially when you're working, caring for a family, and trying to maintain a well-balanced life. While at times you might find ways to cope with this, all of these things can become overwhelming. You may find yourself stressed, depressed, or experience anxiety. All those feelings have the potential to diminish your ability to focus and concentrate on your academics. GCC cares about your personal wellness as much as your academic success. Asking for help during these times is a sign of strength. Seeking support from a counselor in the Wellness Center will most likely lead to finding some solutions for you to be supported through these challenging times. No problem is too small or too big. One-to-one -to -one confidential counseling is available to all registered students who want to talk about stress, anxiety, family issues, or any personal concerns that may get in the way of your academic success. These come at no additional cost as they are part of your tuition. As much as I'd love to meet you on campus, that's not possible during these unprecedented times. Counseling services are offered remotely. Some students last semester felt a little awkward at first, but once they got used to it, they really found it very, very helpful. So if you have any questions about counseling, don't hesitate to ask. You may wonder, how can you make an appointment? Counseling sessions are by appointment on weekdays between 9.30 and 4.30 p.m. Call the Wellness Center at 413-775-1332 or 413-775-1337. You can call, ask for an appointment, and ask any questions you may have. After your telephone conversation, you can find the requests for the counseling forms and the confidentiality forms on the Wellness Center webpage. You can upload them after you complete them within 24 hours prior to your appointment time. It is that simple. 
The counseling process can be an educational experience for you. Typically, meetings are focused on the temporary problems of daily living rather than psychological disorders. You may not only learn about yourself, but learn new skills to cope with personal, social, and academic demands. So contact us. What do you have to lose? And you have everything to gain. My experience at GCC is any student who reaches out for the multiple supports we have on campus are our most successful students. Go, Go for, for it. it. You, you won't, won't be disappointed. disappointed. All right, so again, counseling services is free. It's, you know, it's part of the tuition and fees that you pay. Um, and you can have, you know, one-on-one -on -one appointments via phone or uh, video. Um, and so I encourage you to take advantage of that. We talked about disability services and being mindful of time. I'm a little concerned we're gonna run over. Um, so GCC, uh, when we are on campus has a food pantry. Uh, we have the second oldest food pantry in the country at a college um, because we recognized early on that our students can't be their best academic selves if they're hungry or if they're worried about how to feed their family. Um, we, you know, since new people aren't really coming to campus, our food pantry is not going to, isn't functioning in the same way. But if, um, if you, are experiencing food insecurity, then please, please contact the food pantry email, which is just foodpantry at gcc.mass.edu with questions and they can talk to you about, you know, services that they are offering and what they can do to help and also help get you connected to other sources for food. All right, other student resources that are on campus. Um, there's a variety of them. Uh, all right, so the Office of Student Activities and Community Service. So they're the folks that do IDs. They are the folks who um, are in charge of clubs and the Student Senate. Um, and during the, um, during the academic year, there are chunks of time in the academic schedule that are actually protected. Mondays from 12 to noon, I mean from 12 to one, uh, Wednesdays from 12 to one and uh, Fridays that so we don't have a ton of Friday classes. Um, and that's, those are times when there are workshops and presentations and celebrations on campus so that students can, won't have classes that conflict. And so one of the things that's really important to know is that um, the, the research that they've done on college students has shown that students who are involved on their campuses feel more connected to their institutions and actually do better academically. And so even though we're gonna be virtual, there's still gonna be activities that are happening. Um, and I'm gonna to talk to you about how you can get connected to those. Keep your eye on the website. My GCC also lists, you know, upcoming events. Um, you really do wanna like, especially when we're remote, um, you know, doing these things are how you're gonna feel more a part of the GCC community. And we really want that for you. Um, but I've blathered on enough, and let's hear from Mary McEntee, who is the coordinator of student activities. Oops, wait, just kidding, I went too far. Right, let's hear from Mary. Hi, my name is Mary McEntee, and I'm coordinator of student activities at Greenfield Community College. Welcome to GCC. So part of what I do is I oversee the Greenfield Community College Student Senate, which is the representative body of the student population to the GCC students and administration. So I'm always looking for people that are interested in running for Student Senate. Um, if you're interested, please contact me. Um, you can find me via the website or you can email me at mcenteem at gcc.mass.edu. Student Senate meets every other week on Mondays virtually from 12 to 1. And we also oversee um, student clubs. So we have a permaculture club, Dungeons and Dragons club, multicultural club, entre entrepreneurship club, along with many others that we have listed on our website. And if you don't see the club that you're interested in, you can make and create that club by filling out the paperwork. So all our clubs meet virtually um, through Moodle. So there's plenty of opportunities to interact with peers um, that have the same interests as you. And we also have an advisor for each club, which is oftentimes um, one of the faculty in our department. 
So Trevor Kearns is the faculty advisor for um, the Dungeons and Dragons Club. We have Holly Lovelace as the advisor for the Vets and Allies Club. So this is a great way to take advantage of one-on-one um, -on -one resources. We also uh, process your student ID cards, and this year we'll be doing those virtually where you upload your photo from home. So if you log on to my GCC, you'll see in the corner there's a spot that reads upload your photo. So please follow directions, upload your photo, and I will print your ID card and get it to you uh, via mail. I hope you enjoy your time at New Student Orientation and I look forward to working with each and every one of you. Take care. All right, so when you log into my GCC under uh, the My Announcements, you should see a link that looks like this. Um, and so if you click on that, um, it gives you the instructions and a place uh, to upload your picture to get an EID created. Um, there are some very clear instructions because it has to you know, function like an ID. Um, Mary talked about clubs and student senate um, and that sort of thing. And I just wanted to point out that in your orientation packet, you will find a page with a link to the student activities interest form. So the title of that page is getting involved at GCC. Um, and if you click on that link, it will bring you to um, a form and you can like check off all the clubs that you're interested in or express, excuse me, your interest in being part of Student Senate or like information you want to get about campus wide activities that are going to be happening during the semester. Um, and so I really encourage you to um, make sure you fill out that form. Uh, uh, it's, you know, it's really easy to find. Uh, the Veteran Center. So uh, we have a Center for Veterans, which is a, provides a network of support services for student veterans, their friends, family, and allies. Um, Holly Lovelace is the GI Bill certifying official. And so if you are receiving those benefits, you wanna make sure you connect with her. It's also where you can find the Student Veterans Club. Um, and when we're back on campus, the Vet Center um, is a, provides a community space for studying and socializing. And just FYI, they actually have free coffee and PB&J every day, and that's available to anyone. Um, if you are um, using the GI Bill or National Guard benefit, the GCC, um, you wanna make sure you have a one-on-one -on -one per personalized orientation with Holly Lovelace. Um, you can reach her at lovelace at gcc.mass.edu to set up a 30 minute appointment before the first day of classes. Um, there is a flyer in the orientation packet with the same information with a link to her email address. Um, so if you are using those benefits, uh, please make sure you contact her. As you probably know, the whole process can be um, a little Byzantine. And so you wanna, and she is, she knows her stuff. And so she will help you. Um, and you wanna make sure that you are following all the rules you need to. All right, the Inclusion and Diversity Center. Um, so uh, this, when we're on campus, this is a de dedicated physical space for promoting community and equity and unity um, and cross-cultural understanding among all students. Everyone's welcome, especially those who've been traditionally underrepresented in college. Um, obviously, we're not going, so we're not gonna be on campus. Lillian Ruiz, who is, uh, the advisor for that, um, whose office is in the center. Um, uh, you know, let me know that there is gonna be activities happening, so you wanna keep your eye on their website. In the meantime, um, Leo Wong, who is our Dean of Humanities, Engineering, Math, and Science, um, is, has a, made a video to talk about the variety of diversity, equity, and inclusion um, at GCC, so it's about you know, he's going to touch on a whole bunch of things. Hello, my name is Leo Huang and I'm the Dean of Humanities, Engineering, Math and Science at GCC. I'm here to talk to you about the different ways you can engage in diversity, equity and inclusion at Greenfield Community College. At GCC, we pride ourselves on the wide range of courses that are social justice based and focus on equity and racial justice. 
Here's just a sample of some of the courses you can take while at GCC. Elementary American Sign Language, The Social Impact of Mass Media, Social Issues in Criminal Justice, An Introduction to Special Education, Queer Literature, Women in Literature, Modern Global Literature, Gender and the Environment, An Introduction to Gender and Women's Studies, History of African American Peoples, Women and Gender in the American West to 1920, the Legal History of American Civil Rights, World Music and Cultures, Intercultural Communications, American Civil Liberties, Psychology of Women and Gender, Social Inequality, and the Sociology of Gender. In addition to these cool courses, there are lots of wonderful cultural events that you can engage in, even while we are socially distancing through Zoom. And if you're interested in clubs, there's the Diversity Committee, the Social Justice Club, the International Students Club, the Inclusion and Diversity Center, and many more opportunities. Most of all, I want you to know that GCC is here to support you and all the things that make you a unique and valuable individual. If you ever have a question about how to get involved with social justice issues at GCC, or if you ever need help finding the resources you need, feel free to shoot me an email at hwangl at gcc.mass.edu. Uh, thank you and have a wonderful semester. So I definitely uh, would encourage you to reach out to Leo and to look, you know, if, and to look into those courses and to look into those clubs um, to find ways to, um, my brain told you, sees, to, you know, explore areas of inclusion and diversity and equity. Um, and now I am going to turn things over to Anna, who's going to talk about the Women's Resource Center. Hi, everybody. I'm hoping everybody's still awake with us. Um, I'm going to make this quick because I know we're coming up on the hour. So the Women's Resource Center um, supports female identified students, and really it supports all students. So the Women's Resource Center has some services that are specifically designated for people who identify as women. However, we also have supports that are available to all students. So things like life coaching and planning and financial assistance and referrals, all of those sorts of things are things that the Women's Resource Center can help you with. And in fact, um, if you can change to the next slide, Tamitha. Um, we are very fortunate to have received funding through the Community Foundation of Western Massachusetts to provide emergency funds to students who need them. So if you go to the Women's Resource Center website and you will see a button that says request support assistance, you can complete a form that will explain what are the kinds of support you might need. And it can include help with things like paying for rent or paying for your internet service so you can access your courses for the semester. Those funds cannot be used to pay for technology. However, if we were able to give you a little support so you could buy food for three weeks and it would free up some money for you to be able to buy a new computer, then you would be able to do that as well. So Diana Abbott, A-B-A-T-H, and Rosemary Freeland are the two women who work together in that space, and they are working remotely like the rest of us now. So don't hesitate to reach out, to check out the resources on the webpage. And if there is some way we can assist you, please let us know. We can't give funds to everybody, but we can certainly figure out how to connect you with other resources if we're not able to meet your needs. I think that's it, right, Tamitha? Yep. Awesome. Um, so we do have a fitness center on campus. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about it, but I will say when we are back on campus, the fitness center is free to you as a student. And so I highly encourage you to take advantage of it. We all know that physical activity helps us feel better mentally as well as physically. And so, you know, you know, it's a great resource for you and it's something you want to take advantage of. Um, when we're on campus, we also have a community resource studio. One of the things that happens there are recovery meetings. There will still be recovery meetings happening this fall. They will be remote. Um, and so I'm going to turn things over to Judy, who's going to talk about that. And she's also going to talk about our mentoring program. 
So this is Judy Raper, who's the Associate Dean of Community Engagement at GCC. Hi, everyone. My name is Judy Raper. I'm the Associate Dean of Community Engagement at Greenfield Community College. And I'm here to tell you about two resources that are available to you as you start your journey at GCC. First of all, welcome. We are so happy to have you here and are very much hoping that we'll be able to see you in person on campus in the spring. Um, until then, I wanted to make you aware that we do have resources for students who are either in recovery or have a family member who's in recovery or struggling with a substance abuse disorder. While normally our meetings are held in our community resource studio in the East Building at GCC, for the fall semester, these meetings will be held remotely. You'll be receiving an email from me that lets you know when the first meeting is in early September. And if you're unable to make it, you can email me and let me know what might be a better time for you. These meetings will occur on a weekly basis and be open to anyone who identifies as being in recovery or has a loved one in recovery. Secondly, I wanted to make you aware of a mentoring program that we have. We have numerous older adults in our community most of whom have had a college experience and had a career um, who are looking to be an additional layer of support for you. So if you're interested in having a mentor, there's a simple application that you will fill out online and then you'll have the opportunity to look through some profiles of some mentors in the community that you might want to work with. I will be in touch once you are on campus, so please look for an email from me. Again, my name is Judy Raper, Associate Dean for Community Engagement, and I can be reached by email at R A P as in Paul E R J at GCC dot mass dot edu. Again, welcome. We are so happy to have you and enjoy your orientation. And then, so again, the, she the other thing she talked about was the mentoring program. If you have any questions about that, you can email her. Um, and her email is on that quick links um, sheet in your orientation packet as is a link to um, the website where you can find out more about um, the mentoring opportunities at GCC. That's pretty much everything about resources. Um, we do have a bookstore on campus, uh, they, uh, and you can use them to get textbooks and supplies online. Um, so they have textbooks and software, they have study guides, notebooks and supplies, they have GCC clothing, um, the snacks aren't really going to do you any good right now. Uh, when we're back on campus, you can also get FRTA bus passes from them and meal cards to use in our cafe. Um, like I said, there's a link to the bookstore's website on the quick links. Um, they, you know, that is an excellent resource for you for um, getting supply, you know, getting the books that you need for your classes. Um, and speaking of books, if you are having trouble buying your books, Definitely talk to your advisor. They may know of some resources to help you um, with uh, procuring funds for that. Um, and now I'm going to turn things over to Anna again. I'm back. So um, this we're we're really in the home stretch, folks. So I'm going to talk fast, but this is super important. Uh, as you all know, that there are laws in this country that protect people from things like harassment and um, of all different kinds. We don't have time to go into all those details now, but what I want to stress for you is that coming to college is a place that's really going to stretch you and it's going to challenge you to think in different ways. So for example, you've heard Avery and Hannah talk about some of the classes that they've been involved in that have uh, really address some different social issues in them. So in uh, 1972, the United States Supreme Court identified an educational environment as the marketplace of ideas. And it's not always ideas you agree with. So this is a place where we engage in respectful debate. Sometimes we're going to get real uncomfortable. Sometimes we're going to make other people uncomfortable and need to apologize. And so this is a place where we work on doing those sorts of things. Um, President John F. Kennedy said at one point that we subject all facts to a prefabricated set of interpretations and we enjoy the comfort of our opinions without the discomfort of thought. So sometimes we have ideas 
that we never interrogate and challenge with facts. It's just something maybe we grew up with. And coming to college is a place where we begin to interrogate the beliefs that we have. So be prepared to get uncomfortable with what you are thinking. Can I have the next slide, please, Tamitha? Yeah, whoops, yes, there we go. So uh, the first area that we are bound by in terms of laws, but also in terms of what is right and what is equitable is the policy on affirmative action, equal opportunity and diversity. Your college education should be free from discrimination, from discriminatory harassment, from gender-based harassment, sexual harassment, and any kind of sexual violence or retaliation against someone who has perpetuated some sexual violence. There's also another law, you can change the screen, Tamitha, called Title IX. Many of you have probably heard of Title IX. You may have heard a lot about it in the recent news because the Title IX laws have recently changed. Title IX was originally designed for um, equity in funding for sports for women. So Title IX has expanded and really focuses on no discrimination by sex, no sexual assault, period. And you all are well aware of the Me Too movement and all the attention that has been brought in the media in recent years where people are really holding others accountable for their behavior. So if you see something, you need to say something and do something. And you need to also engage in a way that is respectful of others. Tamitha, go ahead and give me the other slide. So I always boil these uh, two laws down to what I think of as don't be a jerk. If someone is being a jerk to you, say something and ask for help. If you have questions about why somebody might have taken offense to something you have said or done, ask. And maybe don't ask the person you offended, but ask somebody else for a different perspective. So can we have one more slide, Tamitha, and then we're done with this section. In order to learn more about these policies, you can go to the GCC website and find the full diver uh, affirmative action policy on the human resources page. And then the people you can contact if you have concerns are listed here on the right. And I believe there's something in your packet as well. Joan Murphy is our affirmative action and Title IX coordinator. And then many of the people you've met in this presentation are also available to you. Kathleen, our learning support counselor, myself, Anna is the Dean of Students, our Women's Resource Center staff, Diana and Rosemary, our Chief of Campus Police, Alex Wiltz, which you're gonna learn about in just a minute. And then of course, Colleen, our Coordinator of Disability Services. All right, Tamitha. So we're on our, I believe these are our last slides, right, Tamitha? Yep. So public safety, of course, right now is a little bit different because you're not physically on campus. However, you should still think of our public safety office and the officers as people who are a resource to you. So the phone numbers are below. Um, in your cases for um, working remotely, if you were to have an emergency from your home, please do not call the GCC police because they have no jurisdiction in your area. You would need to call 911 for those things. Uh, however, if you have questions or concerns, they will certainly be able to, to provide you with a little guidance. Next slide, please, Tamitha. Um, I'm, you have not seen a map for any of the other offices, but I wanted you to be aware where the public safety office is for two reasons. One is because if you were to use the services of our food pantry, grab and go bags are picked up at the public safety office and much of the lending library equipment is also picked up and returned through our public safety office. They're on the first floor of the south wing um, and it's very easy to get to once you come into the building. Go ahead, Tam, with that to the next one. So our GCC alert system, again, this is a little bit different because we're not on campus, but this is a system that you're automatically 
um, opted into with your personal information that you put into my GCC. And what this alert system does is if there were an um, emergency on campus, this is how you would be alerted to that emergency. So um, alerts come through the phone, email, and the text system. If your contact information is not up to date or not accurate in my GCC, you will not get these alerts. You can also go in here and add, for example, a parent or a partner, a spouse, anybody else you might want to be able to get those alerts as well. Now we do not use this system for things like campus closures because of weather. And um, I just wanna say, somebody put in the chat, watch your email because that's where snow days are announced. I think probably snow days are a thing of the past because there's no traveling to campus, unfortunately. Um, these are also really relevant for being on campus, but when we return, these are important for you to know. We have call boxes around campus that you just push the red button and it automatically connects you to an officer. Uh, there are also emergency response guides in all of the classrooms and all of the meeting spaces. And then in more public areas, there's something called the alertus beacon, which makes a whole lot of noise. And it would also have a message on it that indicates what the emergency is. Go ahead, Tamitha. All right. So two things. One, um, so this is our last slide. And then um, I'm going to pause sharing my screen. I'm going to turn on the survey in Moodle. Then I'm going to turn my screen back on and show you how to get to the survey. Um, the survey is really short. It's not going to take very much of your time. It's how you get credit for attending orientation. and Really importantly, it gives us valuable feedback about your orientation experience. Um, and so that's why we have you do the survey. All right, it will be a test to see if I can make it through this slide without crying. Um, I definitely lost it when I was talking about these stones during the orientation leader training, but uh, fingers crossed, I make it through. So uh, Diana Bath, who uh, Anna mentioned is, is our Women's Resource Center advocate, she has a collection of stones that have words on them. And, um, she, and during the two years that I've known her, she's walked into my office three times and said, pick a stone. And those, you know, that's my stone for the day or whatever. And the three stones that I've picked over that time are the ones that you see in front of you. And so, um, when I went back to campus for the first time and only time since we all left in March, which was back in May, those three stones were waiting for me on my desk. Um, and I feel like they have a really strong message. Um, I actually took the strength stone home with me. It's here on my desk or in my workspace. And I brought it home to have the strength to make it through this pandemic. Um, but I left the believe and the love at GCC because uh, I believe, you know, to hold on to the belief that we are going to come back to the campus and we're all going to be a community together and, uh, and which leads to the love part because the, you know, as I've mentioned before and other people have mentioned, the people are what really make GCC what it is and you are those people. Um, and so I just want you to take away the message that I want you to believe in yourself. These are, you know, these are challenging times. You know, college is going to be a new transition for you and you can do it. Um, and a reminder that asking for help is a sign of strength and that GCC cares about you. 